this out of the way. Clerks, call the roll. Lynn Whitley, County Judge. Here. Roy Charles Brooks, Commissioner Precinct 1. Present. Andy H. Wynn, Commissioner Precinct 2. Here. Gary Fickus, Commissioner Precinct 3. Here. J.D. Johnson, Commissioner Precinct 4. Here. Constitutes a quorum. Thank you. Our uh, invocation today will be delivered by Craig Maxwell from our own audit department. Uh, after the invocation, please remain standing for our pledges. Morning, Judge. Commissioners, if you'll bow your head. Lord, we come before you knowing you are our rock and our redeemer. You provide us with many opportunities to make this a better world in which to live. And it's what we do with those opportunities that help define us more than material items. We ask for your blessings and your forgiveness. And it's with that, it's up to us to forgive others as we all recite regularly to forgive those who trespass against us. We know you will provide us with courage and wisdom to make good decisions as it will be done here by all of us today and in the future. You sent your son to us so that we might see how we, to our, we are to live with compassion and mercy. We pray that all those who struggle with health, family matters, or just can't find happiness, that they may feel your presence, to be comforted by your mercy, for it is written, our sufferings produce perseverance, our perseverance produces character, and our character is get what gives us hope for that we may get through our difficult times. And for those who serve and protect, may they receive your unending love. And in Jesus' name, we all say, Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Mr. Manius. Thank you, Honor. Members of Court, we have one announcement as it relates specifically to this agenda, and that is under the Criminal District Attorney's Office, item 9F2. This is an MOU with uh, Tarrant County College for the use of the firing range. We're going to remove that from the agenda at this time, and we'll be bringing that back to you at, um, at a later date. Uh, two other items as it relates to the, the agenda, we're going to take uh, one out of order because of um, uh, under the county administrator section, item one concerning the 2018 forward stock show and rodeo. We ask that we, we go ahead and take that up after we finish the announcements. Uh, Mr. Brad Barnes, who is president of the forward stock show the rodeo, is here to, to address the court at that time. And then also, Your Honor, finally, um, I believe that you may have an announcement and a recognition that you want to... Yes, thank you. Uh, we, uh, over the last uh, couple of months, have been looking for our new election administrator, and we have identified and hired the individual. Nathan Nibbler is back here in the back. Stand up, Nathan. is our newest uh, county employee, and we welcome, welcome him aboard. Uh, we're kind of bringing him in at the, uh, you know, he, he, he got here just in time for the, for the primary, and so it's going to be an exciting first couple, of, uh, first couple of months. Nathan, welcome aboard. We look forward to working with you. I know that you and a number of folks off your staff are heading for uh, Padre Island uh, to meet with the other administrators. Welcome aboard for every administrator, sir. I thought. Right, just just a little, just a little three or four day vacation down at Padre Island, and uh, you know. show me how things work. <laughs> well, again, welcome aboard, and we'll look forward to working with you. Thank you, sir. Thank welcome, you. Nathan. Your Honor, we could now go to the administrator section, item A one, and ask Mr. Barnes to come forward and address the court. Welcome, sir. <coughs> Well, 
Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. I'm Brad Barnes, President and General Manager of the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo. First thing I want to say, though, is fear the frogs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Number, Just number in case. Nine. Yeah. Number yeah. nine. But uh, normally, Mr. Bass, our chairman of the board, gets the honor of presenting the, our annual official stock show badge. And, and this year, you're stuck with me. He got tied up in some meetings. So bear with me. But we're getting ready to kick off our 122nd year of the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo. So we've come a long way from the north side. You know, our first home was in 1908 at the Northside Coliseum. Prior to that, we were out in the field out there along Marine Creek. Hmm. We moved from the north side to Will Rogers in 1944. And now, as you know, we're all looking forward to our rodeo moving to the new Dickies Arena in January of 2020. And I'd like to thank you and the court for all your assistance in that project. It's, it's been a major project and coming along rapidly. It'll be open in, in November of 2019 because that's what our chairman is publicly telling everybody, so <laughs> it will be ready. But um, just a little brief history of our show. So we're, we're anticipating over 1.2 million people on the grounds during our 23 days of the show. We'll also have in excess of 30,000 livestock uh, on the grounds. Now, of that 30,000 number, about 11,000 of those are junior exhibitors. That's Texas 4-H and FFA students. Those students will be coming from 238 counties this year of the total 254. So almost every county in the state of Texas will have junior exhibitors here. Our open show that's open to the world, those exhibitors will be coming from 41 states to bring their livestock here and compete in Fort Worth and try to win the Blue Ribbon. So all that rolled up into to one nice ball equates to an economic impact to the city of Fort Worth in excess of $100 million annually for those 23 days. Wow. So it's an honor to be here, and thank you for your time. Mr. Groomer is going to have the privilege of actually handing you our official badge. We expect to see you every day for 23 days. <laughs> How can I get to a million two if you're not there every day? <laughs> Brad, we really appreciate you coming out. I know that Commissioner Johnson uh, has worked quite a bit on that uh, cattle trail drive. Uh, you know, and I imagine that he's working as hard on that as he did back when he mowed that Marine Creek uh, <laughs> property a hundred and something years ago. We couldn't do it without him. <laughs> Thank you for the bad. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you and enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you. We uh, look forward to this uh, each year. And I just, you know, it, this is Fort Worth. This is uh, uh, the stock show is Fort Worth. And we're very proud of that. And we maintain that, uh, that tradition. And I know that's something that uh, uh, will never, never change. Uh, as we go forward. So I'm going to put my badge on right now. Probably get it all crooked, but I'm going to put it on anyway. And uh, we'll have it on now for the, at least the next uh, 23 days. 23 days. And go from there. So, and I'll just walk around this <laughs> a little, a little pull down on the right side here from that standpoint. This will get through TSA. Well, it probably won't. You'll, you'll have to take the coat off and send it through. Uh, court members, you have before you the meeting, the minutes of our regular meeting of December the 22nd. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Um, we now come to our employee recognition. Um, Many, all but the five-year members know the routine, and some of y'all may have watched and laughed as you've watched me try to pronounce uh, some of the names. But as you hear me uh, announce your name or what sounds like it, please, um, please stand. I mean, you know, I, I say this, you know where you are in the alphabet. If it should be your name, regardless of whether it sounds like your name, please stand. 
it, it will be a lot less embarrassing for all of us. Um, so we'll begin with our five-year employees. Uh, first is Michael Campbell, Pre Constable Precinct 8. There's Michael. Uh, Carrie uh, Chapel, Sheriff's Department. Harry Clark III, Constable Precinct 1. Chandra Dell, Sheriff's Department. Alberto Garcin, <coughs> Transportation Services. Crystal Guerrero, Sheriff's Department. June Hancock, Sheriff's Department. Michael, I sure am glad you showed up. <laughs> Martha Herndon, Sheriff's Department. There you go. Thank you. I knew that would happen. Uh, Judge Susan McCoy, 153rd Court. Barbara Jackson, Sheriff's Department. Thank you. Chris Lacks, Purchasing. <laughs> I thought I've seen you around here for a long time. You've only been here five years. You must have made a real good, you made a good impression, I'm just telling you. Antonio Magnum, County Clerk's Office. Antonio. Hilda Mendoza, Public Health. April, mute, is it? Go ahead. That sounds good. <laughs> Sheriff's Department. Chris A4, Information Technology. There you go. Michael Overton, Sheriff's Department. Charles Phillips, Sheriff's Department. Charles. Ned Pyle, Precinct 4. Tabra Reed, Sheriff's Department. William Riley, Transportation Services. Bill. There's Bill. 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 John Siegel, Constable, Precinct 6. Myrtle Thomas, Juvenile Services. Kelly Turner, District Clerk's Office. And John Woodruff, Constable, Precinct 2. <coughs> These are our five-year employees. Let's give them a big hand. Y'all can be seated. Now for our 10-year employees. Teresa Blackington, County Clerk's Office. Andrea Carcello. I didn't get that one right. Sheriff's Department. Brittany Drake, County Auditor's Office. Carmen Holloway, Tax Office. Joan Jacobson. Cooperative Extension. Where's Joan? I'd like to get after her. Keith Kelly, Precinct 1. Remoral Lockhart, Juvenile Services. Dwayne McAbee, Senior, Public Health. William Makachka, Juvenile Services. I didn't do that one right. Well, okay, there you go. <laughs> As I said, I didn't do it right. Judge uh, James Mudford, the 322nd District Court. <coughs> Leticia Orpeza, Criminal Courts. Lynn Ortez, Juvenile Services. Josh Palmer, Facilities Management. Damon Price, Precinct 3. Maria Rojas, Juvenile Services. Owele Rontami, Juvenile Services. Did that sound, well, okay, is that, did that person stand up? Because I know I didn't get that one right. <laughs> Tosama Sanchez, Tomasita <coughs> Sanchez. Thank you. Anthony Scott, Sheriff's Department. <coughs> Christy Smith, Medical Examiner's Office. LaDonna Sotis, Ju <laughs> Juvenile Services. These are our 10-year employees. Let's give them a break.
Now for our 15-year employees, Carla Anderson Calhoun, Sheriff's Department, Mary Caro, Probate Court Number One, Arthur Clayton, Criminal District Attorney's Office, Ernest Doman, Sheriff's Department, Vincent Gallardio, whoop. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Thank you. I should know that one. Sonia Hunter, Public Health. Craig King, Sheriff's Department. Michael Klein, Sheriff's Department. Dell Morgan, Criminal District Court Number Four. Deborah Neekum, Judge Deborah Neekum, County Criminal Court Number Four. Clofus Almos, Sheriff's Department. Yeah, well, he may just not agree with my pronunciation. Cleo. <laughs> Jennifer Rommel, Criminal Court Number, That's Criminal much. Court of Law Number Two, Judge Rommel. Ronnie Smith, Criminal District Attorney's Office. Judge Mike Thomas, Criminal District Court Number Four. And Roxanne Tucker, Sheriff's Department. These are our 15 year employees. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> now for our 20 year employees Mark Bloodworth, Information Technology. There you go. Lisa Ford, Public Health. Lisa. Douglas Kelly, Precinct One. Lucy Martinez, Public Health. <laughs> Gloria McCarty, Sheriff's Department. Edgar Miza, Sheriff's Department. And James Webster, Criminal District Attorney's Office. James Webster. 20 years. <laughs> now for our 25-year uh, employee, First is Phil Blankenship. There he is with IT. Uh, started out in IT actually as an intern in 1982. Uh, began, did I say 1982? 92. Well, I guess that's right. <laughs> now, didn't we talk about, we talked a little bit, I thought about interning before, but no, you're right. It's obviously you're right. <laughs> I say that somebody here, was it you? Nope. Somebody I called and I'll, well, I'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> I will, I'll hold the surprise here. Began as a programmer, still doing that, works on a lot of the criminal justice uh, stuff. Uh, he said one of the first things he remembers uh, with his time was the shooting in the old courthouse. He was actually, uh, they were actually locked down here in the administration building uh, at that point in time. He said, I love the family atmosphere. Um, it, he said, I've met a lot of special people over the years. He said, it's been a great ride and he hopes to uh, continue the ride for, for many more years. Phil, we appreciate very much the 25 years of service you've given to Tarrant County. Thank you. Next is uh, Charlie Cole, there he is, uh, with facilities management. He said, I started off in the print shop when it was under purchasing, and then he's still in the print shop when it moved over uh, to facilities, and he's now uh, working for David. He said, I work in the bindery department, and I think what he does is he binds all those big books, puts that all together. Um, he's the one, when I called him, or when we called him to sign him up, he thought he'd only been here 24 years, so he was excited to find out he'd been here 25 years. <laughs> Judge, those guys do a great job. They do. You really they do. do the binary. job, Dad. Putting those things together. He said, I have, uh, he said, what I like the most, you'll, you'll get this. His nose is very brown. 
Uh, he said, I just love the people in the management. He says, I think we got the greatest county judge in anywhere in the state. <laughs> <laughs> and I said that. And I, he did. He did. And, and I you believed with, him. I agree with everything he said. <laughs> we need to get a mental evaluation of him. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that thought came to mind. Charlie, thank you very much for the 25 years of service you've given us. Next is Marion Cox with the uh, Sheriff's Department. Started off in the Correction Center in booking, got promoted, uh, was at Green Bay for a while, um, was in housing in the Correction Center, um, is now in booking, back in booking. Uh, when I asked her what she loved most, she said, I just love my job. I loved, loved and loves working in the booking area and the people that she's had a chance to uh, to work with, um, she said the benefits are great, and she said I've worked the night shift a couple of times when I think your children were growing up, and she really you know appreciated the opportunity to do that. Um, okay, whoever is over here from the sheriff's department, you need to carry this back. She said this is the third sheriff I've worked for. It's the first sheriff I've met. <coughs> wow. So um, that says volumes. Um, Marion, we appreciate the 25 years of service you've given to this county. Thank you very much. Next is a person who has a special place in heaven, Doug Gowan. Uh, I, I didn't have to say anything else. Wilder, I did not have to say anything else. 25 years working in the district clerk's office. Uh, he started when Tom Hughes was the district clerk. Tom said, uh, oh, wanted him to work with him for a couple of years. And then, you know, he figured he'd move on to someplace else and he said after Tom left, he said, I knew the department was going to be in such need uh, of someone to lead them that I stayed with them for, uh, you know, that I continued to work. For. He really didn't say that, Tom. He said he's been very uh, proud and pleased to have had an opportunity to work for you. Uh, he started out as a kind of an information system coordinator, and um, he said right after he got here, his first job really was to prepare for budget and at that time the I think the information system coordinator you had one person in your department and it was you and so he, his first deal was to ask for a new position so there'd be two of them in the department uh, he's now the you know the uh, operations matter chief deputy and has been that for the last 11 years he said memorable moments were um, the tornado <coughs> When, when that hit the downtown area. He said that really it, it's just kind of been a watching the transformation of the department going from typewriters and handwritten uh, records to then to the uh, uh, to technology, to the computers, and now it's, it's beginning to move more into the social media area just in a way to communicate uh, with and stay up with the way you communicate with folks. He said what I like most is the stability he said, um, you know, before I came to the county, I worked for three other companies. And if I look back today, those companies no longer exist. And so there's, you know, there is transition and, and there is that stability um, that we offer. And in the family atmosphere, um, he said, I will tell you that 25 years ago when I came, the family wasn't so big and it was a whole lot easier to know most of the family members. Uh, as we've grown, then it's a little bit more difficult, but he said the one thing I see is the still the that family attitude, wanting to take care of one another and want to take care of people. Um, Doug, we appreciate very much your service to Tarrant County and your continuing and your continuation of those uh, that family atmosphere and that public service minded approach. Thank you very much for your service. Next is Wanda Iglitz from the Sheriff's Department. There's Wanda. Um, started on the bond desk in the Correction Center. Uh, spent 22 years there. And in the last three years, uh, moved over and is in the criminal <coughs> warrants area now. 
when I asked her about the memorable moment, she said it was really the transition from booking to warrants. She said it's been, it's been uh, a, you know, it's, I said booking, I mean bond desk. I saw you say something, I thought, okay, what'd she just say? And I looked, and I've been saying booking, and it's, she said, I didn't work in booking, I worked on the bond desk. Uh, but she said it's a, it's a transition, and that was something that's you know, been very memorable for her. She said, I love the people that I've had a chance to work with. I, I've made she said, just a whole bunch of new friends. She said the, uh, the retirement's great, and it's just been a great place to work. Um, she said, the time has just flown by. She said, when I came to work here, I was pregnant with my son. And now, uh, you know, he's grown. Um, I asked her kind of, well, what made you come to the county? And what, you know, what led you to the county? She says her father had encouraged her. Her father didn't necessarily work for the county or didn't work for the county. But she said, he just mentioned that this might be a good place to, to work and that she ought to look into it. And she did. And. The rest is history. Uh, we appreciate very, very much, Wanda, the 25 years of service you've given to the citizens. Thank you. Next is Sandra Manning, Public Health. There's Sandra. Uh, Sandra started her public health career with the city. So she's actually been in the public health area for 28 years. Um, she is an epidemiology investigator, and I probably didn't pronounce that right. But that's what she, she's a disease, disease investigator. <laughs> and so when something happens in one of these places, whether it be a school or a nursing home or something like, someplace like that, and there's an outbreak, she's one of the folks that goes in and tries to figure out what happened, what caused it. Um, when I asked her about memorable moments, she said, well, it was the Ebola and the fact that you, a lot of folks don't realize what happened in Tarrant County. You know, everything didn't happen to the east side. Um, we had people on a daily basis, Sandra and others, that would go out and watch individuals take their temperature and make sure that things were staying under control. And that happened for a long period of time without a lot of hubbub or without a without a lot of, you know, let's, you know, wave the flag, and, and we appreciate very much the job that they did. When I asked her what she liked most, it was the camaraderie. Uh, it was the fact, uh, the, you know, the, the co-workers that she had a, has had a chance to um, work with. Um, she said, what I really love is I feel like I have an opportunity to make a difference in my community. And... I agree with that, I'm Sandra, with, with that assessment. I think all of y'all make a big difference in the way you approach folks who you interact with, regardless of the setting in which you interact with them. Um, she said, when I came here, I figured I'd only be here for a few months and then I'd move on to something else. And 25 or 28 years later, uh, Sandra, you're still doing great service to Tarrant County, and we appreciate that very, very much. Thank you. <laughs> Next is Kevin Rocher with the DA's office, 25 years. Uh, started in the, you know, the misdemeanor was the, you know, was the baby attorneys in misdemeanor. Uh, then moved from there through the ranks. Spent about 15 years, I guess, in the gang unit and is now one of the deputy chiefs. And I think there's been some kind of reorganization. So his area now includes the gang units, but also special victims. Um, he said, you know, as, as he looked back on memorable moments, it would be specific trials that he may have been involved with. Uh, and usually because it's the criminal area, these aren't just real... You know, these are pretty bad trials in most of these instances. Um, he said, what I like most about working for the county is that it's a solid place to work, uh, that he's allowed to do his job. And he said, and at the same time, I know that there's good benefits and, and it's good compensation. Uh, and so, and he appreciates that very much. Kevin, we appreciate the 25 years of service you've given to the citizens of Tarrant County. Thank you very much.
Now, if you've been watching, you notice that today, for an instant, or for at least this particular day, GK didn't get up and walk out. And that's because GK Manus is celebrating his 30-year anniversary with the county. He normally has other things. Stand up. good things he said about the judge. <laughs> he started with Judge English, and he said it's only gotten better since then. <laughs> he said that there, uh, that there was only one member of the court that we could still blame for him being here. <laughs> I don't think I have to mention who that might be. Um, he said his most memorable moment was that the first year he was here, that the county auditor tried to do away with the position. That not that not county me. auditor. That not not that county auditor. It was one uh, before her. Like it was Mr. Was it Mr. Cosy? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and he does still remember that. Uh, he said, I love the, the people I've had a chance to work with. He has worked in the governor's office, uh, back with, I believe, Governor Clemens. And Briscoe. And then also um, worked in the private sector. Um, five years ago, since I guess when we talked five years ago, your father had passed away recently at that point in time. Uh, he has helped us through many, many things. Uh, he has a 10-year-old grandson who lives, unfortunately, in California uh, and would love to have back closer to this area. And as those of us who are grandparents realize how blessed we are if they are here and how much we wish they were if they're not. Um, he really appreciates the, uh, the opportunity. I know we kind of surprised him a little bit yesterday down in... Um, uh, his department, and I think you have some good words that you you might want to repeat just so your people in your office will really know that you may I address the court? Sure, you can. <laughs> well, first of all, yesterday was a surprise because I thought uh, we were, I was still in senior management uh, meeting, and um, the secretary came in and said that uh, the judge is in your office and he wants to talk to you right now which is normally not a really good situation, <laughs> especially on a Monday morning. But uh, if I could just simply repeat something that I said yesterday. You know, 30 years is a long time, but it's really not to recognize me, but it's to recognize the people in this county that work for Tarrant County. You know, I want to thank uh, my personal staff, all of you. You do a tremendous amount to uh, to make me look the way I do, professionally. <laughs> I want to, uh, we need to make sure we congratulate all the elected officials and appointed officials. We have 68 elected officials and numerous appointed officials, and it's difficult to move in an organization together or forward unless you have everyone cooperating. And then finally, and I'm very serious about this, very sincere, I want to thank uh, the Commissioner's Court for creating an environment in which I can practice my profession in an honorable fashion. Thank you very much. Thank you, GK. I'm really not sure I, I would have believed it except for the fact that I actually saw a picture that he actually had a lot of hair. I was a good-looking man in my younger days. <laughs> I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> but you had a lot of dark hair, and you even had a mustache at that point. Really? So you really forgot to mention what a swell golfer he is. Well, you know, he does like to go out and play golf. He just can't figure out which side to swing from. <laughs> um, our last 30-year employee is uh, our 
DA, Sharon Wilson, and she was not able to make it down here. She had really planned on being here all the way up until uh, last night and <coughs> was not able to make it. So uh, what I just would like to say is that she has served the county in three different roles. She started as a, a district attorney. Uh, she then was appointed and then subsequently elected a judge um, and then resigned and ran for the criminal district attorney's office. While it says that she's been serving here for 32, for 30 years, she's really been serving here for 32 because there were breaks in service in there because of running for one thing or another. Uh, but we really do uh, appreciate the service that she's given us. She has eight grandkids. Um, she really loves the folks in her office and the people that she's had a chance to work with over the years. So uh, please take an opportunity when next you see her to thank her and congratulate her on her years of service to the folks here in Tarrant County. Uh, she's a good one and I hope that she'll be with us for many more years. Um, the total of all those years are 910 years. And that's a lot of years. While we're headed for the cookies. While we're headed for the cookies. Headed for the cookies. <laughs> uh, we cannot tell you how much we appreciate the service you give um, and the way you treat the folks who come before you in whatever situation they're in at that particular point in time. So thank you. Um, there are refreshments back in 504C. And uh, again, please enjoy and have a great, great day. Thank you all. Amber, you can come up here and get this hat. Hi. <laughs> I move that we receive and file the uh, employee recognition. Second. second. Uh, we have a motion to second. In discussion, we vote. Motion passes unanimously. I approve. We. I move. Well, y'all can. You got the consent agenda. Move approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion to second to approve the consent agenda. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Um, before we do the public hearings, um, I want to bring up the bond approval of the bond. As was mentioned earlier, we have a new election administrator. Mm -hmm. um, and I will ask Ann Diamond to discuss with us the approval of the bond. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the Commissioner's Court, uh, it's my pleasure to ask this court to approve the official bond of Nathan Neblett as the Tarrant County Elections Administrator. The bond is uh, in the proper amount of $20,000. It is in proper form and has been executed. We ask your approval. Move approval. approval. Second. We have motions and second. <laughs> That's where you'll get to decide. <laughs> uh, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Now, I'm going to ask Nathan to come forward. Now, we'll swear him in. Uh, and Nathan, if you would like to, I know your wife is with you. Would you please uh, uh, take an opportunity to introduce her? And, um, yes, sir. Why don't you bring her up? <laughs> uh, uh, the newest member of the Tarrant County family, my wife, Anna Neblett. Um, Anna. We moved here several months ago from Madrid, Spain, and it's uh, all starting to take, uh, all starting to happen for us here in Tarrant County. We're just really glad to be here. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. All right, if you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me. <coughs> I speak your name. I, Nathan Neblett, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the duties. That I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of election administrator. Of the office of an election administrator. Of the county of Tarrant. 
of the county of Tarrant, of the state of Texas, of the state of Texas, and will, to the best of my ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States, the Constitution and laws of the United States, and of this state, and of this state. So help me God. So help me God. Nathan, you're not going to go to work for another voting machine vendor anytime soon, right? I haven't received any offers, if that helps, sir. I think we need to sign a non-compete. <laughs> That's a great idea, actually. I think we need to hear, hear from Nathan. Yes, in English and Spanish. <laughs> if you would like to make some comment, feel free to do that while I'm signing. Well, thank you very much for accepting me into this role, uh, for being selected by the commission into this role. Uh, it's an honor to be appointed. Uh, it will also be not an easy road, uh, not only because I'm new to elections, but because Tarrant County is growing. Uh, it continues to grow. And since the last time we renovated the elections administration with uh, equipment, 16 years. The county has grown 600,000 people since that time. And now we need to make a plan on how to move forward. So uh, I just want you to know I'm not someone who likes to look back. Uh, if we're going to make a plan, let's plan ahead. So that will be my job, uh, and I'm going to do that in as neutral a manner as you may have ever seen. So you have my word on that. So thank you again. We're very happy to be here in Tarrant County, and we're very happy to be a part of this family. Red Lake. Now I would I will recognize the other members, or at least two of the other members of the election commission, who are here today, uh, Mary Louise and uh, Ron Wright. Uh, the commission is made up of um, not only the, it's the county judge, the county clerk, the tax assessor, collector, and then the two party chairs. Uh, so. Um, we're excited about Nathan coming on board and look forward to work with him. Judge, I think there's a, a conspiracy to allow the Marines to take over the county. Yeah. Well, we want to keep it on the naval side of the deal. You, know? oh. <laughs> you just need somebody so you can play with. <laughs> um, with that, we will move back now to our public hearings. And I believe we, there you go. Morning, gentlemen. I have uh, three public hearings for you this morning. The first one is for uh, Southwood. Precinct 1 has request that we uh, look at establishing a speed limit on Southwood Drive at Precinct 1. I've done a speed study on that, looked at accidents, and uh, my recommendation is for a 30 mile an hour speed limit on that roadway. I'll open the public hearing at this time and ask if there's anyone here wishing to speak to this matter. There being none, then I'll close the public hearing. Is it appropriate to take action at this point? Yes. yes. I move approval of the recommendation second. of the Transportation Department. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Second public hearing is uh, citizen complaints uh, regarding speeding on Younger Court in Precinct 4. Uh, with that, we did a speed study, recognized that uh, there is not a posted speed limit on that road as well. <coughs> we recommend a 30 mile an hour speed limit for Younger Court in Precinct 4. At this time, I'll open the public hearing and ask if there's anyone here wishing to speak to this matter. There being none, then I will close the public hearing. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Last public hearing for today is uh, citizen complaints and a site visit uh, to uh, the intersection of Gatewood Circle West and Willowwood Drive in Precinct 1 indicated there's no uh, current right-of-way indication at this uh, intersection. Looking at it, uh, the geometrics of it will allow a yield sign, so my recommendation is to place a yield sign uh, for Gatewood Circle West at this location. This time I'll open the public hearing and ask if there's anyone here wishing to speak to this matter. There appearing to be none, then I will close the public hearing. Move approval. 
Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Manius. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the court, if we could go to item A1. This was this concerned the presentation which was made earlier. We're requesting that you receive and file this item. So move. Second. second. We have a motion is second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Finally, members of the court, on item number two, we are requesting that the commissioner's court approve amendments to the county's travel and meeting policy. I believe we have outlined those changes in your court communication and are seeking your approval. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Tidwell. <coughs> I ran into our uh, outside auditor this morning, so it is the season, I guess. <laughs> yes, they are here. Um, our first item that we're asking the court to consider this morning is the approval and release of the $921,015,000 of collateral is listed and outlined in your court communication. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? <coughs> Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And the other item we have for your consideration is to receive and follow the quarterly investment report for the period ended September 30th of 2017. Move to receive and file. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion Thank you. passes unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The Risk Management Board requests approval for a claim of $1,291.06. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. The motion passes unanimously. Thank You've you. got to check. <laughs> Your Honor, we can handle this item after. After your close. Turn. Close, please. <clears throat> Move to receive and file the personnel second. agenda. Second. We have a motion to second to receive and file the personnel <coughs> agenda. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Good morning and thank you. Good morning. We have a few more items for the court. The next three items are all waivers. All will result in net savings to the general fund. The first one up is the district clerk's office. The district clerk is uh, requesting a waiver of 400 vacation hours effective January 15th with savings to the general fund estimated to be approximately $829, including fringe benefits. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next waiver is from the elections office. Uh, uh, elections is requesting a waiver of 344 vacation hours, effective January 10th. Again, resulting in savings to the general fund of approximately $3,200, including fringe benefits. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. So the third and final waiver uh, comes from pretrial uh, pre services. Pretrial is requesting a waiver of 384 vacation hours. Uh, that's effective January 10th as well, with estimated savings to the general fund of a little bit more than $9,600, including fringe benefits. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number five, we're asking the court for an extension of project employment in the district clerk's office. Uh, the district clerk is requesting an extension <coughs> through January of 2019. This individual is involved uh, on the scanning project, of course, scanning the paper doc documents, records, into electronic records. Uh, there is no impact to the general fund associated with this request. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any How discussion? long has this been? Uh, this particular one. Year. It yes, started sir. back when JD became. Yes, and, and recall, Commissioner. Uh, years. Yeah, the, <laughs> the court uh, uh, decided several years ago that these project uh, employees mm -hmm. they do receive benefits, and so with, with the one exception being retirement benefits. And in the early days, they actually received retirement benefits as well. So, so these are individuals who are employed in a temporary status and, and receive benefits. So, but yes, this one has been a long time. So, so basically the difference is just the re they don't receive retirement. Correct. 
And do yeah, these do these employees change, or do we have thirty-year employees or um, ten-year employees sitting in this position as a project? Employee? Yeah. Well, typically, what I see, uh, and certainly there are exceptions, but typically we see these <coughs> project employees actually move into full-time positions and then are replaced by uh, new temps. I'm not sure in this case. I mean, obviously, this person's been around a while. So, and some of these individuals are in temporary positions because they don't want full-time work. I mean, they prefer to. Um, maybe they're college students. I don't know what their specific situations are, but, but many of them do move into full-time positions. And I know many of our departments work with these individuals to move them into full-time positions if that's what they desire. I would hope that that's the case mm -hmm. because to work in a long-term mm -hmm. temporary position mm -hmm. where you don't have the ability to accrue any retirement benefits mm -hmm. is not a good thing for that individual in most cases. What about insurance? They've got insurance. Yes. They, they, they get insurance. insurance. They get everything but retirement. Correct. And so I, you know, I agree with Commissioner mm -hmm. Brooks that if this, you know, if, if we got five ten-year employees that are have been project employees for <coughs> or for that period of time. Yeah. And we can certainly take a look She'll at beat that. Me up. I know she's going to beat me up yeah. again when I she mean, comes I back. Think it's fairly, I just know she's going to beat me up again. I think it's fairly easy for us to um, to take a look at that and see see what the tenure actually is. But again, I wish you would. Yeah, we'll do that. But again, just for the record, a lot of these folks do move into full time positions. But we'll certainly take a look. You know, I, I would probably, just from my perspective, I would probably feel a whole lot better about this if these people were usually part time. Mm -hmm. or literally would work six to nine to 12 months and then because they knew they were going someplace. So they're a student. They knew they were mm -hmm. going to eventually go somewhere else and that this was just mainly a job while they're, you know, kind of a part-time job while they're in school or something along that line. If we got I, some, if, if some of these positions are truly, we're going to have this position forever. Mm -hmm. Um and we've had the same person for a, Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's truly always part time, and we and they switch about every year or so, then that's different. But um, it shouldn't be a career because it's not. Yeah. And again, we'll be happy to take a look at that. We have a motion to second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And the very last item we have is item six. We're asking the court to approve uh, changes uh, to the table of organization for criminal courts administration. As uh, described in your court communique, this is sort of multifaceted. We're looking to reorganize the specialty courts. We're looking at the reclass of two position or two program managers, mental health coordinator. We're going to be shifting around positions to reflect proper reporting relationships. And then finally, we're going to retitle uh, some org units. Uh, we're requesting that these changes take effect 113-2018 at an impact to the general fund of a little bit more than $10,000, including fringe benefits. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Beecham. Come on down. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have uh, three items for your consideration this morning. Our first item is a bid award recommendation for RFP 2018-023, RFP for Substance Abuse Outpatient Treatment Services for our CSED Department. Recommendation be to award uh, per the terms of the contract, awarding to the three vendors as shown in your court communique. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two, also a bid award recommendation for RFP 2018-024, RFP for mentoring and advocacy services for siblings of probation youth. Uh, recommendation be toward the Youth Advocate Programs Incorporated, the amount of $109,775. If approved, we're also seeking contract approval from the court. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Last item number three. Again, a bid award recommendation for bid 2018-035. Saying a contract for tactical gear for our sheriff's department. Recommendation be to award a per enterprise basis, awarding to the primary and secondary vendors as shown in court communique. 
Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Judge, could we start including under public health an influenza update as a standing agenda item? There may not be anything to report every week, but I'd like to be able to have that option. Yes. We're, we're getting right into the sweet spot of flu season. That we, we can we'll we'd already that. scheduled that to begin next week. <clears throat> Thank you. There's nothing that you feel absolutely critical that we need to talk about between now and next week, is there? We'll have a full briefing for you next week, and I can send out an email update today. To Thank you, Penny. Uh, Commissioner Brooks, I believe you have an interlocal agreement. We good. Yes, Commissioner. <laughs> I move approval of item, what is it? Nine. J nine N one A and B. Second. Yeah, Your motion is second. Leave me hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> I was fixing to ask you what you must have done. Um, we have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. What? Goes around, comes around. <laughs> I was waiting for one of the <laughs> <John> commissioners. <laughs> have these two been approved by the DA's office? Yes, Commissioner, they have. <clears throat> I'm of approval of item 9, N, 2, A through D. Second. We have a motion to second. Uh, any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> Are there any appointments today? There being none, then you have before you the claims, including the addendum. Move approval of the claims, including the addendum. Second. second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, public comments. We have an audience participation form from a Rebecca Travis. Rebecca. Come forward, if you will, please um, go ahead and state your name and your address so that they can get that into the address. Okay. Um, my name is Rebecca Travis, and I reside at 5705 Trail Lake Drive in Fort Worth. That's zip code 76133, and I'm a resident of Precinct 1. Um, in the last several months, uh, we've had a lot of gambling and gaming rooms come into our area. And that got me to really thinking about why isn't anybody regulating these places? Why are they happening? Um, real quick here. Um, this is where I live. This is a mile circle. That's Hewland Mall. So I'm within a mile of Hewland Mall. Um, within a 20-minute walk, which is a mile, I have 10 game rooms. Six of those are actual game rooms that have six or more machines. The other four are convenience stores with a couple game machines hanging off of them. I found that Fort Worth City tried to regulate game rooms, but they found that they couldn't because of an old law um, that, right, that says municipalities cannot regulate game rooms. They can only say they can be you know, a certain distance from schools, from churches, from hospitals, but they can be right next door to your house. Uh, they can't regulate how far they are from a neighborhood. And in my research, which you all have a little folder that's all my research, I found that on May 26th, House, um, the Texas legislature, House Bill 3453, gave what I believe Tarrant County the right for the commissioner's court to actually regulate game rooms in Tarrant County. And the reason that I think this is because I believe we are number nine of that bill where the county is more than 1.8 million people who resides next to a county of 2.2 million people, which is Dallas County. Now this gives the commissioner's court the right to regulate game rooms including the location of those game rooms and whether or not they can be in our neighborhood or whether you, you guys can even push them out to unincorporated areas in the county according to 
um, Texas Local Code 234.133, which is also copied in your documentation there. Um, the first county to actually give that right to the commissioner court to regulate game rooms was Harris County. And Harris County um, put out their first regulations in December of 2013, and they were immediately sued saying, you can't do this. Well, they won many of those lawsuits, made a few adjustments, and everything has been upheld since then. They've been able to reduce the number of their game rooms from 144 to uh, 115 to 44. In that same time period, Fort Worth has increased their game rooms from 115 to over 1,000. This is a problem. Um, just one mile from my house, there's an address, 5400 Woodway, and since December 1st, they have had one shooting, one aggravated assault, one case of larceny, um, one auto theft. Um, <clears throat> see if I missed anything. I may have. And the game rooms at that location, the two game rooms at that location, have been raided twice in the last three weeks. All of these game rooms are paying out cash. This is a problem in Tarrant County. I'm sure it's not just in my neighborhood. I think I'm aware of it in my neighborhood because I started driving by these places and seeing all these cars and all these people, and I thought, what are these people doing there in the middle of the night? Why, why do we have all this traffic that we didn't have before? Why are all these people wandering the streets up there and you know, begging for money in the parking lot so they can go in and feed these machines? Um, I would like that for you guys to actually look at this and think about and start regulating game rooms in Tarrant County. I think that there are only 11 counties in the state of Texas that are allowed to regulate game rooms, and we are one of those 11, and I'd like to see us do that, and I'd like to see us accomplish that. I'd love to see in the first quarter of 2018. I'd like to find out that you guys are already working on that, but maybe you're not. And that hopefully somebody can pick that up and champion it and do it, because I believe we need it not just for the safety of our neighborhoods, but to help protect our home values. Mr. Travis, let me explain that um, because this item was not on our agenda today. I know you cannot We can't respond, respond to, to you on this, but what we can ask you to do is to communicate or to, to talk with Mr. Manius, and uh, I'm sure that what will happen is that he will work with you and our district attorney's office and they will come back to us with some sort of a, uh, a response. And maybe it will be to put it on the agenda in the next uh, couple of weeks and at least give us an opportunity to hear what the, uh, uh, you know, what our options may be in that regard. So I appreciate very much you bringing this to our attention and, and uh, bringing this down here. And hopefully, again, uh, we'll be able to help resolve this and figure out exactly what our options may be interested in. I appreciate you for bringing it to our attention as well, Ms. Travis. And in as much as this is brand new legislation, we need to figure out what we're going to do about it to give our citizens some relief. We will uh, get with get with Mr. Manius and we will move from we'll move forward from there. Okay. Thank you very much for again for bringing this to our attention. Um, with that, I'm going to recess our open meeting and proceed to close to discuss items exempted under section 551.071072074076 and 087 of the Texas Government Code. Come on. You've changed since this morning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, a lot better. <laughs> Having returned from our closed session, we will now address the following matters. Judge Commissioners, we ask the court, uh, this is item 9F1, ask the court to approve the settlement with Miguel Soto uh, in cause number 48-285792-16 uh, in the terms presented in the communique. So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. 
Motion passes unanimously. Please show that Commissioner Brooks is not here. There being no further business, we're adjourned. <laughs>